Hey, it's Ramsey Dewey over here in Shanghai, China. Welcome to another edition of Q&A with the Coach. We have a question today from Ink Thinks, who says, It's been super nice to finally get back to BJJ. Here is my question for the coach. Why do boxers do road work? But we don't tend to see that in jiu-jitsu or many other combat sports. Is it a matter of laziness? Or is it any less effective for grappling? All right, road work, if you're not familiar with that, if you come from a combat sports tradition that doesn't go out there and do road work, that's, that means running. You get on the road and you run for a certain number, number of miles or kilometers or minutes or hours on a regular basis, often every day. And boxers have been doing road work for a very, very long time. So it, it seems it seems foolish to challenge that tradition. Every great boxing champion has done the road work, right? All the great boxing champions skip rope. All the great boxing champions do these very specific things we expect boxers to do. You look at the movie Rocky and the Rocky training montage. All the great boxers do all those things. They hit the bag, they run, they skip rope, they do all that stuff, right? So shouldn't everybody do that forever and ever and ever? Amen, without questioning it at all? Not necessarily. Why don't we see tons of road work in BJJ? Why doesn't your jiu-jitsu instructor tell you, by the way, wake up early every morning and run 10 miles every day in addition to your BJJ training? Well, I'll tell you why. Because... While running 10 miles a day is not necessarily a bad idea, it doesn't actually make you better at jiu-jitsu. And the type of cardio training that running does for you, again, it will not make you worse at jiu-jitsu by any stretch of the imagination. But will it make you better at jiu-jitsu? Not necessarily. I'm not a big proponent of road work, and I'm not a big proponent of excessive jump roping. And this upsets some people who are very stuck in traditional thinking, because all the great champions from the past did this stuff. Where do I get off telling you, yeah, you don't need to do that? Your body will adapt to the demands you put on it. And if the demands you put on your body are to run a half marathon every day, guess what? You're going to be a great runner. But will you be a great boxer because of that or in spite of it? Now, depending on how you are running, depending on how you are skipping rope, there can be athletic crossover. For example, when I see a flat-footed fighter, this is about the only time I will pull out a jump rope and say, hey, you need to skip some rope for a little bit every day. And it has nothing to do with cardio. It has to do with adaptation of movement to get them up on the toes, being able to raise the heels to get that spring in the step, to be able to bounce a little bit, which is what skipping rope does. And if you are running, not jogging, but running, going toe, ball, heel, toe, ball, heel, instead of heel, ball, toe, clunk, 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 which is terrible for your joints, please don't do that. If you are jogging for fitness instead of running for fitness, switch that up, my friend. Save your joints the wear and tear. It's not a subtle distinction. It's the difference between night and day. Contrary to what you may have believed or may have been told, jogging is terrible for you. It's terrible for your joints. It is terrible for your longevity. Running, or more specifically, sprinting, is fantastic. So if your road work means running sprints, cool, do that, because there is a ton of athletic crossover for combat sports with sprints, including jiu-jitsu. But running, or worst case scenario, jogging, ugh long, slow distance, high impact on the joints. Throw that in the trash, man. That's junk training, in my opinion. Now, the way boxers run today, the way they do their road work today is way different than it was 100 years ago. If you watch films of boxers 100 years ago doing their road work, 
they would hold a stick in their hands. They would hold a stick in their hands, they would hold their elbows close to their body, and they would rotate the stick as, as they ran. It was a very different movement than the running, the road work that most boxers are doing today. Now, I don't know if the athletic crossover was greater holding that stick, or if it was simply a tradition back then that just got cast aside. But it is interesting to note that even though we tell ourselves we're following this ancient tr or this old tradition that's been going on for over a hundred years that all the champs did, we're not really, because we changed it. Nobody's running with a stick in their hands anymore. So who was the first guy to say, hey, well, you know, Jack Dempsey ran with a stick in his hand. Gene Tunney run, ran with a stick in his hand. All these other old timers ran with a stick in their hands. Yeah, I don't think that's a good idea. I don't, I'm not going to do that. I wonder if the first guy to do that was chastised. Blasphemy! You must run with a stick in your hands, like all the champions of old. Well, you know what all those old school champions also did? They cross-trained in wrestling. Nobody's doing that in boxing anymore. And we also have to point out boxing is a different sport now with different rules. The referee breaks the clinch immediately. That wasn't the case back then. The clinch went on and on. Dirty boxing was often allowed back in the day. It's not anymore. So do you get where I'm going here? Boxing today is a different sport, subtly, but importantly, different sport than it was a hundred years ago. And so the training is, importantly, different, maybe subtly. But how much different should the training for jiu-jitsu be? Marcelo Garcia, famous jiu-jitsu practitioner and coach and champion, was once asked what kind of cardio he did for jiu-jitsu because the student of his noticed that Marcelo could just roll and roll all day long without becoming even a little bit tired. And they thought, well, man, Marcelo must do some crazy cardio circuits. He must do some high-intensity intervals. He must run or swim or something like crazy. And Marcelo responded, I do more jiu-jitsu. What's the cardio you do for jiu-jitsu? I do more jiu-jitsu. Now... How much cardio do you need for boxing or kickboxing or Muay Thai? One of those stand-up arts, which is very, very cardio-based, if you will. I would recommend watch my video, The Cardio Myth, because cardio, as we understand it, as far as it, as it carries over to actual fighting, is largely an illusion. It's in the mind. But, how much cardio, how much actual exer exercise do you need? How much cardio are you getting in an average training session? What should a boxer or kickboxer be doing? Well, let's say a boxer on average should be doing, let's say, three three-minute rounds on the heavy bags every day. Okay, that's already nine minutes of cardio. And I would add to that, do three three-minute rounds on a double-end bag every day. That's nine more minutes. We got 18 minutes of cardio. Do three three-minute rounds on a speed bag every day. Add another nine minutes to that. What do we have? Nine times three. Math nerds figure that out. It's been a long time since I was in first grade. Hmm. But we have almost a half an hour of cardio. 27 minutes, right? But there's probably a warm-up leading up to that. A lot of boxers pull out a rope and they skip rope for 10 minutes, some for 20 or 30, thinking, I need that, I need more cardio, I need more cardio. Okay, and then they hit the mitts. Let's say they hit the mitts for another, another three rounds, nine minutes. Maybe they get a little, a little extra. Let's round that up to 10. So we got, not including the rope skipping, We've got like 40 minutes of punching. But then maybe they do some extra shadow boxing, another 10 minutes of shadow boxing, 50 minutes right there. And then maybe they do some sparring. Maybe we got three rounds, another 10 minutes of sparring. We got a whole hour of cardio in there. 
and not just cardio, very sports-specific cardio, punching, moving in the same way that you intend to move in a fight. Hitting the bag, hitting the speed bag, hitting the double end bag, hitting the heavy bag, hitting the mitts, sparring, shadow boxing, moving around athletically in the way you intend to move in a fight. The closest thing you can get to a fight without actually fighting. Okay. How is jogging better than that? How is rope skipping better than that? You might be saying, well, in addition to that. Now, if you have the time, if you have the patience, if you enjoy it, great, do it. You don't have to stop because I, I, I don't think it's the best use of your time, especially as a mixed martial artist. Because if all you're doing is boxing, there's only so much actual boxing you can do in a day until you reach the point of diminishing returns. At which point, maybe it is wise to do some road work or rope skipping. But if you're a mixed martial artist, okay, you got an hour of sports-specific cardio, hitting the bags, hitting the pads, sparring. Okay, but guess what else? You also need to train to be a grappler. And you need to cl train clinch fighting. And you need to train all these other transitions. You need to train your get-ups and your duck-unders and your sprawls and all this, all this other stuff, all these other ranges of combat. Guess how much more cardio you're going to be getting. Guess how many more high-intensity intervals of very sport-specific movements you're going to be getting to become a well-rounded fighter that week. Oh, many more hours, my friends. Many more hours. How? How on earth is running going to replace that? How on earth is running going to add any significant advantage to that other than a mental one? Now here's where running, where road work, we're skipping rope, we're doing some long, tedious, chore-like exercise on top of your regular training routine may come in handy. Maybe you are very comfortable, like Marcelo Garcia was, at rolling all day long. You have adapted to that. It's fun, yet you can do it with a big smile on your face, just like Marcelo, right? But you want to be a cage fighter, and to be a cage fighter, you have to be comfortable becoming uncomfortable. And maybe you hate road work. Maybe it's the bane of your existence. Maybe it strikes fear in your very soul. So what do you do? Well, in that case, get out there and hit the road once in a while. Maybe you hate burpees. Maybe you hate them with a passion. Maybe they strike terror into your heart. So what should you do? Well, once in a while, you should do some burpees. Embrace the suck right there. And what does that do? That can develop mental strength that can make you mentally stronger. Because cardio, my friends, is mental. A lot of tap-outs, especially at the amateur level, and even at the professional level, they happen not so much because of the risk of serious injury or unconsciousness or something like that, they often happen out of fear. People will succumb before the submission is set in. They will succumb to the position out of fear. Not fear of the enemy, not fear of damage, but fear of fatigue within themselves. Oh, crap, I'm not going to be able to do this. I'm not strong enough to scramble for that position, so I'm not going to get choked. <sighs> and then they give up. They give up long before the positional battle is even fought, let alone won or lost. And that's where mental strength comes in. It's those moments before the really seemingly significant moments where the mental strength comes in where you have to dig deep and decide, I'm going to scramble for a position right here, even though I'm tired. Even though I feel like I have no energy, I'm going to get up and do it anyway. And sometimes the road work and the skipping and the burpees and the high-intensity intervals and the non-combative movements, if there's something that you hate and you resent and you don't want to do, but you get up and do them anyway, can push you to a state of mental fortitude that you couldn't have otherwise achieved. So in that sense, 
Yeah. But if you're one of those guys who just loves running and, ooh, the endorphins, this is my, this is my easy work, right? Then you're not going to get the same type of effect from running. Get comfortable being uncomfortable. Because, again, the cardio, largely an illusion, as long as you maintain your breathing the way that you should and maintain your mindset the way that you can. Thanks for watching. Now get out there and train.